Hey, what's up, everybody? GP13 here, newest episode of the Risk Takers Podcast. I'm joined by Mr. Limited. Um, I've mentioned actually on my one podcast appearance, I gave I I mentioned Mr. Limited as like oh, one of my if not my favorite uh, Twitter accounts. He's he writes long form content that uh, focuses mainly on how to keep like good account health, and it's very unique and it's really really well written, really in depth. And I've been you know, big fan for a while and I'm so pumped to have you on, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. And and thanks for the shout out. Um I'll have to I'll have to find where you that was me good out, uh good juju bets. Oh yeah. yeah, man, appreciate it. Um well no, I'm they super love you pumped too. to be here. Oh good. Yeah, yeah. No, I know they follow me and um yeah, no, I mean we've been uh you know we've been DMing for a bit, kind of sh- sharing stuff and thought it would be obviously great to hop on here. Um, and yeah, you know, for anybody listening, obviously, but, you know, I try to get back to kind of any individual questions, but, um, yeah, it'll be great to, to come on and hopefully give some more, you know, hopefully, hopefully learn something. Um, and, uh, yeah, it should be great. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember when we first connected on, on DMS and I think like of you're like one of, one of like five accounts that's like anything you write, I'm immediately reading the whole thing like no matter what like i i said i think i said it to you where it's like andrew mack is another one <laughs> bowtie yeah. better you yeah. you know it, it's just like really well thought out content and you've you've picked a niche that everybody cares about like every single person asked me like how do i not get kicked off sports books so like why that niche yeah i mean i i think part of what you just said which is that there's not a lot of content on it. Um, I think partially because obviously people who have found ways to not get kicked off sports books probably want to keep some of that stuff closer to themselves. Um, so I, co- I sort of set out on this challenge to produce content that was um, would not sacrifice my own EV, but would actually also help everybody else. Um, and I think so far, you know, I've done a pretty good job of towing that line. I haven't really, you know, shared anything that I think would actually put me in trouble. Just more like, hey, this is a relationship you have with a sports book. Um, it's something that you probably want to protect, you know, just like any other business relationship or whatever. Um, you know, here's kind of how to go about it. Um, if you want the like longer backstory, uh, there's sort of sure. an interesting parallel that I have. Uh, I read a book like a long time ago. Uh, it was actually about blackjack. It was about like card counting and beating blackjack in a casino. Uh, it was called Burning the Tables in Las Vegas by this guy Ian Anderson. Dude, I highly the recommend you read it. Best you read that one? book. Perfect. The best book. So what is, what is fascinating about that book, um, and I read this before betting was legal in my state, but I kind of like filed it away to like eventually use some of the stuff yeah. in sports betting. It's like, so it's all about like how to win at blackjack, right? But very little of the book is actually about how to count cards. Like that's actually kind of easy. Like you can learn how to count cards in two weekends, probably if you like really set your mind to it and want to 90% of the book is how not to get caught (laughs) and like how to like keep your longevity and like, you know, make sure that they don't think of you as a sharp player, as a recreational player. And I just think that book's so fun and fascinating. And when, you know, sports betting became legal, like I kind of set out to be like, well, all of this, I mean, you know, it's not a perfect parallel, but like so much of the stuff applies to your relationship with the sports book, um, up to and including, and I think the sort of core of any strategy is basically making recreational plays that don't actually cost you that much EV. There's all, so much math in, in, you know, blackjack around that. Um, in sports betting, it's something that's harder because you can't, you know, definitively calculate right. EV or, you know, or anything like that. Uh, but you can, you know, you can approximate, you can get pretty close. Um, and so I just thought, you know, I'd, I'd start writing about that because I really liked it. And then, uh, you know, I read uh, Ed Miller's book, who I think you've had on as well. Um, yeah. I was pleased to see that like some of the stuff that I'd already thought about, he's written about some of the stuff that I hadn't thought about is in there, but some of the stuff that I've thought about isn't in there. So it's a good, like, yep. you know, it's good to see that there is momentum to getting more of this content out there. Um, and I think it's a, it's a super um, cool space and i sort of raised my hand and was like i'll take this you know i, I want to write about this stuff Dude. um so that's kind of why we're why we're here i love that you mentioned burning the tables in las vegas such a good book i i like i 
It actually makes sense because now I now I kind of see through that lens. I'm like, oh, it all makes sense. But my favorite burning the t- uh, tables in Las Vegas story was when he <laughs> he dresses up as a burn victim, right? Yeah, and yeah. like he yeah. tapes up his face, and That's they right. like refuse to like kick him out because they feel yeah. so bad for him, and he's yeah. just like he wheel he gets like wheeled down to the table and like posts up yeah. and plays like like two weeks table, of yeah, like of advantage blackjack, yeah. yeah. And it's like yeah. the thing is is so I think like a lot of people who are on Twitter are newer to gambling, so there's a lot of talk about like what's plus EV, but. I don't hear a lot of outside the box things like that. Like I've heard the equivalent of like someone dressing up as a burn victim from people who are successful sports betters. It's different, but like they're always thinking about how the books perceive me. How do I look square? Who do I like? Can I talk to somebody to get a VIP account? Like, or like, wow, that guy's a massive whale. Can he play his best for me? Like there's all of their focus is going towards getting down getting longevity. Whereas I think the discourse on Twitter is plus EV. What am I betting quarter Kelly? Is this 4% or 5%? What book is sharp? And it's like, I love that you're shifting the discourse over here because to me, that's more interesting. It's more creative, you know? Yeah. Well, it's also, yeah, I mean, part of it is that that first thing you mentioned is pretty saturated. Like the way that I think about it is everybody, you know, is, somewhere on their betting journey and I, I usually like chunk it up into three phases so phase one is like you just you're trying to learn how to win like you're probably unprofitable and you're trying to learn right. any way to win money and not light your money on fire and actually make money from this thing which is is very doable as we all know yep um but but that's where most people are right like a lot of people are in that phase where it's like i just need to learn like i right now i lose how do i win um yeah and so that's a great so you know and if you can get through that phase, you know, congratulations, you're already kind of in the top 10%. Um, and I would, I would, there's so much content, you know, we're not going to go into a ton of that because there's sure. so much content sure. out there on how to like just win. There's many ways to do it. You can top down, you can originate. There's like, you can, you can find a way to win. I, I promise. Um, and then that, that phase two area, which is like kind of where I'm, I'd probably put myself in like, you know, more of like a late phase two, like I'm not full time. Um, but that phase two is all about like, now that I know how to win, how do I like protect my accounts, protect my longevity, think longer term, think like, um, always kind of stay ahead of the curve, right? I know an edge that I have is going to go away. So how do I like be proactive and think of another one, think of another one, think of another one. So that's like that second phase. Right. And then, and so, you know, I'm trying to create content for people who are kind of like entering that, that phase, right? Yeah. Okay, you know how to yeah. win. Now let's talk about like some of the more kind of fun stuff about how to like win a little bit more, win for longer or keep winning, you know? And then, you know, that third phase, I would say, this is probably where, where you're at is really just scaling it as a business, right? How do I like, you know, make this my business? Uh, How do I, you know, ensure that I have sufficient outs till the end of time and, you know, make sure that I, uh, you know, I'm able to kind of project a yearly P and L type of thing, you know, as much as you can in this, in this business. Um, and yeah, you know, that's, so, you know, I'm not really, not really there yet, but I think it's, you know, that second phase is super cool. Um, it's where it's, it can go a lot of different directions depending on who you are. And, and most people don't want to go full time in this, right? Most people are looking totally, I think the ideal, you know, outcome for a lot of people here is, you know, I want to make an extra income on the side without having to, you know, I like sports and I want to make money on the side and I want to kind of get it down to a. Uh, understandable enough process where I can kind of do it without, um, you know, spending hours and hours every day. Uh, and I think that's kind of the fun stuff to talk about and keep my accounts open, obviously. Sure. And I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because you had a, a post, I think it was you about originating and the time it takes to spend right now. I, I hear <laughs> this too. And you, you mentioned in your post that like a lot of people say, originating i can't i don't have the time for it but you kind of offered a counter counter argument to that like what what do you say to people who are in that second bucket or trying to get there maybe taking that mm-hmm. jump from the first group who just learned how to win they're moving to the second bucket it's a whole new world they're thinking about their account longevity but they don't feel like they have any any runway to originate with whatever time they currently have like what would you say to them 
Yeah, I think probably the quote I said was like, shift your thinking from I don't have time to it's not a priority because that's like, yeah, then you're being a little bit more honest with yourself, right? About what you are because because you can do like whatever you want, right? With your time, I mean, right. like in, in general, true. it's kind of a free country. Um, now, it's probably not smart to prioritize originating over like your full time job, your family, your kids, you know, if you have them like, okay, that, you know, I get that it's colloquially fine to say I don't have time after doing all that stuff. Um, but if you're somebody who, who does have, you know, free time on your hands, maybe, you know, if you, if, if you don't have kids, I promise you, you have more free time than you think. Um, I don't have kids yet, full disclosure, but um, all my friends are starting to have kids and I've never felt like I have more time in my entire life uh, than right now. <laughs> um, but, you know, the thing is really, if you are trying to really take that leap and be in that second step, I mean, you just have to prioritize it at the end of the day, right? I mean, and, and that might mean you skip brunch with people for a day. That might mean you don't go on X, Y, Z. That might mean you, you know, you gotta cut those rounds of golf or ski trips back uh, a few days. Um, you, you know, you just gotta prioritize it, right? You gotta basically say, commit to, I'm going to do this. Um, this is a much uh, better and more, um, uh, I was trying to find an adverb for longevity, but um, much, much longer term way to win. Sustainable. Than just sort of top down. It? Yeah. Much more sustainable way to win. There you go. Um, and, uh, you know, if I want to, if I want to kind of take that next step and, and really make sure I'm going to make money this year, uh, you know, I got to find at least a market or two to originate or start thinking about it. Um, this other thing that I'll say to people is, and this is sort of, um, a general response to, to a lot of DMS I get, um, when a lot of people think origination, their mind immediately jumps to like coding or like, how do I scrape yep. a ton of data? Um, yep. I would, I would challenge you to back up a step and say that's like let's yeah. that like that will help eventually but let's start thinking through the process of how to actually do this so like i'll give an example of something i originated recently that involves literally zero python and zero data <laughs> um and, and and this is kind of how origination works right these are sort of like right. fleeting edges that you capture and find and you know beat a market for a while um, but the one that I'll give an example for, and maybe this will be there next year, maybe it won't, is uh, Josh Allen rushing yards when the game starts to matter. So Josh Allen um, mm. runs a decent amount during the regular season, um, but they generally keep him in bubble wrap. When you hit week 18 and the playoffs, um, and this is demonstrably true over the last two seasons, uh, the gloves come off, right? And they, you know, he basically just, just runs a ton. Um, and this is, you can see this in the data, right? This, like, this happens yeah. every year. And the sports books, based on how they price the market, do not sufficiently adjust for the fact that starting week 18 or around one of the playoffs, Josh Allen is going to be like running double the amount that he runs like every other game during the season. Um, and so if you if you know this and you've looked at the data and you study this, you, like me, will bet Josh Allen's rushing over. You'll cash in the first half every week like we just did. <laughs> um, and... Uh, and, and so like that, that's not coding, like, so the, like, that's origination, right? Like we're talking about the process of thinking through a sport and a market and like what might happen, back testing it with a few samples, basically being like, I think this is real. I will say when you're originating a market, you also want to understand why the line is what it is and why that's wrong and why you're right. That, that makes you very yeah. confident in a yeah. bad, right? I, I, bad origination yeah. is going, oh, Vegas is asleep at the wheel on this line. You know, it's like that. Yeah. That's not what it is. It's, there's right. a reason the line is what it is and there's a reason it's wrong. And if you can, can explain both of those very clearly, and in this example, that would be uh, the algorithms that they use to price the props are not built to adjust a rushing total significantly enough from week 17 to week 18 based on a change in circumstance. Like this is, I think, demonstrably obvious based on what we've seen yeah. the last two to three years with this particular bet. Um, and so as an originator, you're like, all right, this is kind of the exact situation I'm looking for. I have looked at the data. I think I project here. Um, the books are here. I know why the books are there. You know, I'm going to basically slap an estimate of EV number on it based on my projection and where the lines are at. Um, and you're kind of off and running. A lot of origination looks like that, right? It doesn't look like... Yeah. I wrote the most complicated Python script in the world to scrape data from NFL.com's website and then cross-reference it with the weather data and then cross-reference it with like this data, right? Um, there's obviously some of that, and I'm, I'm sure you do some sure. of that in golf and you know all that stuff, but it's, uh, it, it's largely, if you're going to start originating, start thinking like that. Start thinking like, what's a market that I know probably is algorithmically priced? Like it's not really like, yep. they're not really like responding to serious changes in game state or anything. Um, and what do I know about the sport that can allow me to beat it? 
And then once you find something, by all means, you know, clean it up with some code. Um, but that, that shouldn't be your first sure. step. Your yeah. first step should be find that edge, right? Think about it. So hopefully that makes some, some sense on my no, thoughts. No, that <laughs> makes it. And I think, I think the other, when you're talking about like, you should have that why explained. So you you have the why explained of the sports book. And then the why for the other side is, A, the data just showed to be true. Yes. But you yep. could even go one step further and be like, well, it makes sense. Because yeah, Josh Allen as a runner is uh, better. It's better if he runs a lot than not. But they're obviously protecting against injury. So they're only going to run him in high leverage situations. And when it's the playoffs, they're less uh, risk averse to him getting right. injured, basically. So it's like that all makes sense. Go about it. And I, like everything checks out. And I think that's you, you made a great point. It, Originating doesn't have to be just like this massive PhD level project that's going to, you know, model every outcome and slap on AI and ML to it. Like a lot of it's, I call angles. Like what are angles that come up? It could be in the, in the, in the rules of a sports book. Like you can originate because the rules of a sports book are bad. You know, that that's That's originating. Find a bad rule. You could originate that exact situation. When I think originate, I think like, would you be willing to bet it into a market if each line at every book was the exact same? That yeah, to me, that's exactly. originating. And if, that's if, a good way if to if put it. I like that a lot. Yeah. yeah. And like, so that doesn't have to mean it has to be something complicated. You could have a very easy reason to understand why each line is wrong and it could require zero code, like Mr. Limited said. So I think. That's right it is good to have these conversations and kind of like bring it down to earth. It doesn't have to be crazy. You know, you could get started. Um, and one thing you mentioned in your, you had a great post on originating. I'd say that was, I love all your posts. That might've been my favorite, but I kind of like red light, green light too a lot, but now let's talk about, remember what I said. <laughs> well, I'll, well, on the originating one, since we're here, then Perfect. we'll switch to red light, green, green, we'll stay yeah, red light, green light, because Billy Walters also talks about playing that in his book. Um, Perfect. You talk about, you started trying to originate college basketball sides, and then you were like, eh, maybe I'll do NHL uh, period lines, right? Yeah. So why? Yeah. Um, so let me try to remember the story behind that. So yeah, when I kind of say I started to originate college basketball side. So like when I had just turned 21, it was kind of like, like sports betting wasn't legal. And I, I didn't even really know that much about sports betting. Like I was always the kid who was like doing the bracket, March Madness bracket contest, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, in high school and like collecting the money from everybody. Right. Yeah. Um, and I, I, you know, wasn't thinking about like sports betting or the sports book at that time, but I finally went to Vegas for the first time when I was like 22, probably. And, you know, college basketball and college football were, were, you know, at the time, the sports that I followed the most. I grew up in a college town, so that made sense. Um, And, yeah, like I had found, like, Ken Pomeroy's basketball, you know, Uh, KenPom.com, like, pretty early before it was kind of mainstream. And um, was like, oh, man, like, maybe I can use this to beat the sports books. Like, it turns out, no, you can't do that. Um, and that was a good, they read a good lesson to learn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they 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 had also found Ken Bob apparently. At the time. <laughs> um, and so, like you know, after kind of going back home, uh, you know, dejected after losing all my five dollar bets or whatever, you know, at the time, um, I realized like, okay, uh, I just started like learning a lot more about it, right? Learning like, okay, like how how does this all work? Uh, it was just all like really interesting to me. So I kind of figured out that a lot of different books and there's market leading books and there's all these lines and there's all these prices and there's all these limits you know money you can bet into each one and so uh you know i did do a little bit of kind of top-down stuff for a bit early on basically realizing that okay if i can beat the number that it closes at and then the closing number is efficient then i probably can make money um and you know that works pretty well yeah. Um, but then I kind of came back full circle and said, okay, like now that I kind of know how to do that, let me actually try to beat like a closing market. Well, what closing markets might not be efficient? And I think I stumbled on some content of somebody who had like an NHL first period goals model or something that they were trying to okay. tell. Okay. And I was like, oh, that's actually interesting. I bet, I bet that's doable because different teams probably 
play line combinations differently throughout the game. And I bet the first period is the most random, right? Like, you know, some teams are going to do like, some teams are going to make sure they have their, their top guys out there. And some teams are going to rest them for the second and third period. And, you know, I kind of just started looking through a little bit of time on ice data and being like, Oh, so some teams like play their guys, play like like their best guys for only like four minutes, like in the first period. That's interesting. Um, And that sort of got me thinking, um, yeah, if I just kind of look at some of the stats from like, once again, going back on the advice of find out how the market's priced. The second thing I checked yeah. was, all right, these period markets are priced algorithmically, right? The total of the game is six and a half. The first period total is going to be X. Like, that's just what it's going to be. There's no, with no, um, you know, uh, like no opinion uh, needed right. after that. Like, that's just how they price it. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I kind of found, you know, what I thought was a, a, a small but reasonable edge on these are the, sort of the teams that I want to target yeah. first period unders on. Um, and if they are both playing each other, then I think I have a valuable bet on the first period under yeah. similar with the over. And I kind of Very just cool. like kept my stats up to date. And um, yeah, you know one. I mean, I think it was still a small enough sample size. I'm not even a hundred percent sure if it was like fully profitable, but I did win money on it. Um, and, you know, maybe like, at least realize that like this, again, this isn't rocket science. This is like, and yes. you know, I didn't even use code, right. I like manually pulled data. Obviously I could have automated right. it by coding if I wanted to, but didn't take a ton of time to manually pull it. So I just refreshed it like every week and, you know, bet it for a season or two and seemed to work out. So wow. yeah, that was kind of my journey of learning that, you know, these things are beatable and you can do it and you just have to, you know, think a little bit. Is that. Yeah. And in your in your originating post, you talked about you said you no, know, it was a response to your originating post because I assume you got a lot of DMs and a lot of messages, and you know people people are certainly curious on how to learn this stuff. And you said you were like um, getting data and understanding. No, it's like understanding basic statistics and getting good data is more valuable than learning to code. So can Correct. you expand on that for people who are still like, I'm going to have to learn a boatload of Python to even start this? Yeah. So everything that I sort of talked about in the um, first period example I just gave, like I'm sort of casually glossing over some of it, but there's a lot of like fundamental understanding of um, outcomes, statistics, events, probabilities that are sort of naturally you know baked into that conversation yeah. and what i've sort of realized interacting with folks on dms is um if you can have if you can get to the point where you have a intuitive understanding of probably let's call it like college level stats class or you know ap yeah. stats class in high school or something yes. like that um that's like you you really do need that first before you really want to go kind of off in decoding because if you don't have that fundamental understanding like a lot of this is going to take it's going to be very confusing and take a long time to sort of understand like wh- why things might be valuable in a certain way. I'm maybe I'm not explaining. This yeah. Super yeah. Well, but no, no, you, you are, just, you are. It's you like, you have to, you kind of have to get there first because you won't yep. like, you won't be able to naturally understand maybe why an edge is an edge or why the, the degree to which an edge is an edge or how independent events interact with each other, how correlated events interact with each other, uh, which obviously you need to, to find a lot of edges. Um, so I would really recommend, um, and I know it sounds like a lot of work, um, and I hate to be the bearer of bad news that you might have to like do a little bit of work. Um, some work. But I mean, you uh, the most plus EV thing you can do is is whatever you need to do to get to that sort of like, just know your college level stats class cold. And once you're there, then you're ready to to really uh, have some fun with this. Dude, that is so spot on because, so, I mean, I did take, um, I have taken that stats class, but yeah. I think that more my, my knowledge has just come from like, uh, you know, 10 years in poker. I think anybody yeah. who like plays poker professionally will understand these concepts, but it's, Correct. I find that sometimes the things I take for granted, like people will be like, hey, like, you know, I don't think correlate. I don't think correlation works for this sport because um, I often hit five out of six, but the sixth leg always misses. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, you're gonna hit a lot more five out of six. First of all, 
to begin about with. About five times as many times. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so get, get used to that. Yeah. Second yeah. of all, like correlation isn't something that like you it works or doesn't work for a sport. It works on what it's me- on the data it's measured on. So like it may be, maybe there is no correlation in MBA, but if you're like telling me there's no correlation in football, but the data say, you know, the correlation is X, Y, Z and pick them experts out there saying like, I've ran, you know, a million, I've run like the data on like a million different combos. And this is the correlation. Like that's, that probably means it works. So you have to believe that. And it's sometimes it's that belief. It's like, you, you know, like to say correlation doesn't work because you've lost, you know, a couple, you know, a lot of six leg parlay is like, I understand. And I understand why, but it's like, you have to have the belief and to have that belief, you have to understand it. I think to go, go with it long enough. That's a great point. Yeah. I hadn't thought about it as much that way, but you're right. Like it's, again, having that fundamental understanding of, of how probability and statistics works. Like if you have a losing week, like if you don't understand math very well, you're probably freaking out. If you understand yep. probability really well, you're probably like, yep, this happens one in every six weeks that I bet yeah. given my you know thing. Like, this is like really not a big deal. Um, and uh, yeah, I think if you don't really have an intuitive understanding, you can, you can lead yourself down a lot of uh, tough paths. Um, you know, just by, just by kind of not really understanding that. For sure. And I mean, I, I can almost set my watch to like certain people, how frequently they'll DM me because they're having a bad result uh, in like mm-hmm. six leg parlays. I'm like, well, I'll talk yeah, to you in a week when you also lose, <laughs> you lose another 20 in a row, you know, like it's that's right. Yeah. Oh, I, I haven't hit a golf happen. outright in, in three months. Uh, yeah. Like awesome. They don't work. Like, don't they know. don't That's work. Golf outrights don't work. Yeah. I know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, I think I think that that's that's important. So I mean, good news to anybody who already has an understanding and is listening yep. to this. Like, you have a, an edge. Like you're leveraging that. So this is good leverage to poker players, to the people who took advanced stats, to data scientists. To anybody who who has already gathered these skills, you do have a there's a barrier to entry, and that I I would you know recommend that those people give it a shot because it probably is easier than making money in in the other fields right now. But um, yeah, to people who right. haven't, like it's still it's still worthwhile. Like like you mentioned working, like you might you're the bearer of bad news. You're gonna have to work hard, but yeah. that's just it's not, it couldn't be easier to succeed just because all you have to do is like do work that people don't want to do. Like I went back and I right. learned Python, even though I was doing okay with Excel, but I knew I needed to do it. I didn't want to do it. I tried four or five other times, didn't do it. But I was like, you know what? Like this is because it's such a pain in the ass and no one wants to do it. And then that's great. That's a huge edge. So anytime you have something that you can do that people don't want to do, it's like playing a low owned play in a GPP, right? It's like <laughs> the low owned play is doing a lot of hard, annoying work, and like it works in sports betting. Correct. Correct. Yeah, that, and that's, I guess that's the final thing I'll say too about coding is like you mentioned you're just learning Python, like yeah, but like think about all the work you've done to originate your stuff, and now Python is a tool for you to just make it totally. so much more efficient and automated, right? So that's the other thing. I'd that's say exactly like, right. Again, I'm not bashing learning. I don't want my tweets to come off as if I'm, I'm not telling people to learn how to code. Absolutely learn how to code. But recognize that it's like I would learn to beat the thing manually first and then, yeah. you know, clean it up with with your code, right? And make it, you know, get the time down to find the bets from an hour to two minutes, you know, by learning by yes. time. Like that's where all the value lies. Um, that's exactly. So coding that's is exactly not going to make right. you win. It's going to right. automate the right. process by which you win. Right. So, you have to come with the process, you yes, know, like, correct. like my, my Python learning was taking what I had in Excel, moving it literally like That's right. just moving it to Python. That was a whole accomplishment in its own, just getting it onto Python. And then because of that, there are some things I could add that I couldn't have reasonably added in Excel that I already knew I wanted to add that I added. But the, like you said, it, it's, it's a time, it's a time saver, you know, it's a massive time saver, but that's, that's, um, 
it, it doesn't win, you know, it doesn't win for you. So it's good to have, it's good to have uh, some domain knowledge. Actually, now here, here's here's a here's a good a good segue. So Jfar, my last guest, um, came under some heat from the the what we're calling like the plus EV community, mm-hmm. which I hate calling it that because it's like yeah. doesn't define doesn't describe anything. Like if you make a plus EV bet, you get there many different ways. It's still plus EV, but for not basically like math is king you can't beat the sports books domain knowledge is stupid and um yeah jvj far you know fan the flames a little but he was he, i thought he was definitely right but what do you see in this uh you know we're both on twitter like how do you see this discourse maybe evolving or what are your thoughts around like the current twitter discourse where like i see you as more of an outlier and i see jfar as more of an outlier than uh, kind of in the, the in, you know, the, you see like yeah. 200 accounts talking about ARBs and you see like four accounts talking mm-hmm. about like um, interesting stuff. And then you see like 20 accounts uh, trolling and then you see like 10,000 <laughs> accounts demanding refunds. That's like how I see yeah. it. <laughs> right, 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 right. That's right. Um, yeah. I It's an interesting discord. I'm not, I guess I'm not really, now that I've, sort of been on Twitter and observed the whole discourse for a couple months. I like, it makes sense to me. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, as you said, it, it can't be that easy, right? Like it can't actually be that easy to win. Otherwise none of us would win because then the, right. if it were that easy. The sports books would also have perfect numbers and, you know, they would also right. be perfect at limiting sharp betters or whatever, or they would just go out of business because we'd all just be winning. So that would not, none of right. those scenarios are actually good for us to be clear. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think, I, I think the only thing that's happened in the discourse is like, it's unfortunate that like, yeah, plus EV has sort of become synonymous with a very specific section of a community that posts quarter Kelly plays at a certain amount of value. Like that's like, that's a very specific way to bet and it does work. I want to be very clear. Right. It's not like it doesn't work. Like if you find, I mean, some people are, who are debugging the ESPN bet, maybe don't know what they're doing, but uh, in general, if you like have a good sense. Wait, of, uh, ESPN you know, that's oh, sharp though. You see the positions <laughs> they took? Yeah. Chiefs plus 150, man. Super sharp. Yeah. Um, it's a, uh, <laughs> it's a, uh, yeah. But I mean, you know, my point is like, that that has unfortunately become a little bit too synonymous with just the term plus EV. I wish it were called something else. Like I wish that community would yeah. call themselves like the the you know two percent quarter Kelly Arb squad. Like what you know whatever. Right? <laughs> like, that, that's a way to bet. Like it's fine. Like yeah. it's not. I'm not yeah, bashing yeah, yeah. this by any by any means. Like totally valid bets. I follow some of those people. Some of them have good plays. Some of them remind yeah. me to like look for specific markets. Like okay, NBA threes for example, which I know Jay yeah. is also a fan of. Like, hey, the alt lines definitely have value sometimes. Like, that's important to remember, and that's important to work into a sports betting process. Um, but uh, care, that it, carrying the entire flag of, of plus EV is not really correct, right? There's so many different right. um, ways to find uh, plus EV plays. One of which I just described earlier in the show that has sure. really nothing to do with debigging to anything, um, and as you said, you know, has everything to do with. Uh, making a projected line that is significantly uh, a real line that is significantly different than what the sports books are offering. Um, so I, I try to mostly stay out of it at this point. Like it is what it is. Um, I don't think there's much to be gained from like jumping in, um, but I do enjoy the kind of like, I definitely enjoy the the masses, for lack of a better word, the ten thousand people demanding refunds on FanDuel. Um, That's fun. Jumping in and and flaming all oh, plus EV. Oh, they're betting the cap. I like, like it. idiots. <laughs> you know, um, I, I enjoy that because uh, similar to like the poker example you gave, it kind of means the industry is pretty alive and well, right? Like you need yeah. a bunch of people who like don't believe in math whatsoever <laughs> to continue to bet. I mean, it's, it's it sucks to say this out loud, but I mean, like at some point, you know, these sports books need to stay in business and they need to make money. Um, and similar to like the the don't tap the glass back in the poker boom, like I don't yeah. think it's super worth engaging people and trying to change their mind and saying, oh no, like math works. <laughs> like you're, you know, hey, if you want to bet 
uh, you know, McCaffrey touchdown every week. Uh, I am, I am rooting for you and there is no way I'm not going to stop you. Like have fun, play within your bankroll, right. enjoy the game with your buddies. Like, please, please bet whatever you want. Like that is not, that is not my problem. Um, and you know, similar to how in poker, right. When somebody says, Oh, you shouldn't be, you know, going all in, you know, this late in the right. tournament, it's too risky. It's like, Hey man, like, cool. <laughs> you know, you don't try to correct yeah. them. You don't try to like, you know, no argue um you're just kind of like yeah you know play however you want it's a free you know it's a, it's a game Hope you're so fun. many people do that was my thing in poker yeah. like how how yeah. in the inability of like an okay player to not like snap back at a fish for time that they play bad yeah. it's like oh my how god call just there. like have some have some you know self you know, have some self-belief where you can just let that pass and not and, and feel right. fine. <laughs> like you don't have to Correct. develop fish, dude, for everybody's sake. Yeah. And I do see yeah, that on I've, Twitter. And the it backfired yeah. in the JFAR situation, which I thought was funny because it was like, oh, he actually understands math better than all. No, all. yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was like so it was kind of like the come up ins for every like like uh, shit rag poker player yelling at a fish that like right. <laughs> turns out the fish is like phil ivy and he was just like dusting because he was like watching right. he's like tilting in some like 1k or something like that you know it's like scenario like that no, so i did that is did true, get yeah. some enjoyment yeah, um, yeah i think yeah because obviously jay you know he 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 wins and knows what he's doing but but actually does a phenomenal job of sort of presenting exactly the image that i'm uh, you know, yeah. advising people present to the sports books, which is a dude who loves to gamble on a heater. I mean, that's the best image you can possibly present. Um, and obviously a lot totally. of his followers, you know, think that too. So he's, he's probably doing a pretty good job. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, let's, I want to talk, I want to get back to the, to the, to get some, the roadmap. Like how do we, what are we presenting <laughs> to the sports books? How are we becoming betters that win but they don't throw out because i think that's like yes. one that's the inter that's super interesting um you talk about some cover plays so you two things that you mentioned which i agree with is the first few bets so like first few bets on an account at a sports book and potentially doing some um some suboptimal bonus play you want to walk us through like let's say let's say you and i were like a new sports book opens and we're we're, we're planning like what do we do for our first yeah. you know week or two there what would you what would what would be going through your mind yeah exactly um let's yeah so let's think about it long term for a second so the goal like really what we're trying to do right in all of this i, I kind of want to make this very clear to, to anybody listening like there's that um what's going to happen in your life cycle. If you are a winning better and the life cycle of your account in the sports book, is there's like that initial period, which we're about to talk about, um, which they're kind of like evaluating your play. Um, then there's hopefully you get evaluated as a recreational, right? And then there's some longer period where you just bet. Um, and I'm oversimplifying it a little bit, but I think this no, is that, that, that's kind of how this yep. works. Um, and then at some point in the future, uh, the sports book kind of circles back and realizes like the amount of money you've won probably isn't random. Yep. And like there's enough sample where like you probably know <laughs> yeah. what you're doing. And our goal is simply to maximize that time between like point A and point B, right? We're trying to stretch that like unrestricted play after your account's already been initially flagged as like probably good up until the point where it's like, hang on, like this person's winning. Um, we're trying to stretch that time out as much as humanly possible. That's That's what we're trying to do here, right? So for sure, um, the way to do that. Okay. So like the initial, so like the first step obviously is to pass that like initial account review. Right. And the, the reason it works this way is because the way a sports book has to think, right. The only way that like a trader loses their job or like the sports bag actually mm -hmm. loses money is if they let a bunch of sharp people just create a bunch of accounts and just like start firing away, um, you know, for weeks and weeks and weeks and, you know, pick off all their bad lines, like all this stuff. So by, you know, almost by rule, they have to be skeptical of every new account. They have to like immediately put it in a period where they're like specifically evaluating every play and being like, all right, what is this? Because if we let a bunch of these just run wild, you know, that's yeah. really the only way we lose money <laughs> as a sports book. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I thought I I'd thought about this for a long time, but I, I do think those initial like bonuses and promos are almost like not necessarily a trap, but like a very smart tool to evaluate like 
do you have a pulse or not? And do you kind of know yeah. what you're doing? Um, yeah. And I, I realized this uh, pretty early and, and kind of then heard it on, you know, another show somewhere. Yes, and I was like, oh, yes. yeah, exactly. That's, that's, uh, yeah, we, that's, we that's talked happened. about that. I actually hadn't thought about it until uh, what you're referring yeah. to is uh, ship the justice on yeah, circles the off, right? The ship. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, and he talked about, he was a points bet trader. And he talked about literally the first thing you'd see is yes. do people play the free bet on, you know, long odds, which is mathematically optimal, but of recreationals course. never do it. And that's like, <laughs> I was like, damn, that's actually the perfect way to segment. It's, it's, it's the perfect <laughs> trap. Right. And so, yeah. So yeah, let's talk about a few different types of boosts and bonuses. Okay. So yeah, sorry. I have a lot of backstory. In no, now, no, no, no. This is great. No, this is great. No, I'm just, to, to the listeners. All right. You know, now you're about to learn the roadmap. So, Yes. Um, you so there's that initial deposit bonus, right? So you deposit, you bet, you know, ten dollars or whatever, and you get a bunch of bonus bets. Um, so obviously, there's a that's that's kind of your first test to pass, right? The way a sharp player would do this is they would deposit money, they would bet exactly whatever amount they need to get the bonus, and then they would probably use the bonus now that they obviously are a good player and they have a, a bankroll behind this, um, probably on something pretty long odds where they're so the risk is zero. Obviously, it's a bonus bet. Right. So they're going to find as much EV, you know, break even or plus EV stuff they can possibly parlay together and just try to hit, you know, hit that bonus for, you know, a decent amount of money. Um, <clears throat> what a rec is going to do is <clears throat> because, because, you know, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the offer is like bet $5, get a hundred, whatever. They're going to view that hundred as theirs. You know, the rec is really going to mm-hmm. view that as like, I want that money. Like that's mine. I'm owed it from this deposit bonus. Yeah. And so they're going to try to bet something that's like, even money, maybe even a little bit of a favorite to just try to like extract that money and like withdraw it. Cause like, that's like how they think about this. Like they want to like, you know, yeah, they want to yeah, convert yeah, that yeah. bet to money. They don't want to lose it. They feel like it's already there. Right. So they just don't want to lose it. Whereas a pro is right. like, this is not, this is not my money. This is a, this is a free right. roll on hitting something. Right. Big. Like it, if it goes away. It doesn't right. Matter. Right. Um, so that's the first test, right. That you got to pass. Like just, you know, it's funny it's on, on <laughs> those, on those yeah. free bets. They'll be like the, the, you know, the longest or the shortest odds you can take is like minus 200. You can't take minus 300. And I was always like, I was never going to do that. <laughs> you know, like I was well, like, that's why. thanks for stopping me. <laughs> happy to cash that out for 20 bucks. And that's why, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and so, yeah, Which just is put wild. it on some even money. Just, just, just bet it on whatever your favorite sense, NFL yeah. side this weekend is. That's, that's what I'd recommend. Then you get into like the, uh, the kind of no sweat bets, um, which you'll probably get a lot of if you just mm. open an account. Very similar thing with those. Um, the optimal way to do this is to bet the exact yeah. amount you need to bet to get the bet on something that's probably plus EV anyway. And then yep. once again, use that if you lose, use that free bet on some you know insane long shot. Like that's mathematically yep. optimal. Yeah. Don't do that. Um, instead, yep. I would probably recommend betting something that's even slightly different than the dollar amount that's actually you need to get the no sweat. So if you need to bet 100, bet 110, wow. like bet 120, bet 100. But like it doesn't like again, this should be a profitable bet for you anyway. Like this yeah. doesn't, yeah, yeah, know, yeah. This shouldn't um, actually uh, matter what you bet it for. Um, but like a major red flag is if you're always, you know, and I'm sure a lot of recs do this too, but I mean, one way to surely be flagged as somebody who isn't paying attention is to just not even bet the, the right amount like you know yeah yep. yep. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah exactly like one, you know whatever right um i actually i have a uh i think i have a bet and get in an account right now for tennis where yeah. i have to you know play through some amount of money and i guarantee you i'm not going to play through that exact amount of money it's going to be a little more um because yeah, yeah, because that's yeah, not yeah. what somebody who's paying attention would do somebody who's paying attention would play t- to the cent exactly yes, how much you exactly. need to, you know to yeah. get the thing yeah um so yeah so just just don't do that um and once again you know when you get that um when you get that free bet you know just be careful um don't don't show that you really know what you're doing um because i mean the way I think the counter argument to this is like, well, you know, part of my AV is, you know, maximizing bonuses and, and free bets. And my response to that would be, you should be, you should be making money. If none of these existed, you should be making money, right? If yep. you can't be the sports book without bonuses and promos, like you're yeah. not really winning. So yeah. learn how to win. Um, yes. Learn how to beat the sports book without the bonus and promos. And then view those as tools that you can use in your arsenal to just display whatever signal you want to the book. 
Um, yeah. That's sort of how I would recommend doing it. And that's a great way to get your account through those first three weeks. Um, you know, you're betting stuff and you appear recreational with, with all the bonuses you use. And that's going to give you a pretty long leash from the get-go. So in that, in that three week period where we're, we talked just about the bonuses now, but you're also like, let's say you have this first period hockey angle yep. figured out, you know, this is a new, you know, this is a new book that we're coming to now, you know, all you have all your tools, right? Are you going to be only betting that angle? Or are you going to be betting like a, a shading, like 20, 30% that angle, 70% like NFL money line, NFL side, stuff like that. Like what's your mix? And then do you that's, shift your mix as the account grows older? Yeah, that's an awesome question. Um, I think I should should definitely go into that. So in those first, in that evaluation period, um, and again, you don't know how long this evaluation period is, right. but I would, for the purposes of this, you can probably assume about a month. Um, yeah. So just, I think if you do stuff for a month, you're probably good. Um, I would recommend within that month not betting any serious arbs or yeah. like major outlier numbers um, yeah just i just don't do it like you you have the rest of your life to to make those bets and make money um and if you are originating a small market like nhl first period you know hockey goal scorers uh other stuff like that uh i would probably keep that to you know, 20 ish percent of your action. Mm -hmm. um, it's fine to bet it. Um, I just, just wouldn't show that you're, cause I think it's the other way to really get yourself in trouble. If you, um, because a sports books profile of a customer is, is, you know, they know that people can be sharp in different ways. And one of those ways is like, they know the most about X. So if right. you show up and you only bet X, they're going to be like, okay, I'm concerned this person is a first period hockey sharp. And I don't really, that's like, <laughs> we're an entertainment recreation platform. I don't really want like a first period hockey uh, <laughs> sharp uh, yeah. guru just like on the platform. Right. So if that's the only thing you bet. That might be a little difficult to defensively call yourself a recreational player um, because recreational players bet a ton of stuff. Right. And so I would simply mix your action, try to bet stuff that's as break even as possible. Um, totally fine to find uh, the other thing I would say, bet closer to game time, right? Don't yep. bet any overnight yep. super early in the week stuff where you, yep. you know, you're going to get CLV. Uh, the best thing to do, honestly, find a total or a spread. That's maybe the best price is at this rec book that we just signed up for mm -hmm. bet it near game time probably getting maybe negative 4% EV on that yeah. one. That's probably okay yeah. for the first month of grooming yeah. an account, you know, maybe originate some, some college basketball totals uh, like I do now and hopefully get that to break even or maybe plus 1%. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. You know, well, then I'd you're love kind to of buy that, point buy that service. That's zero. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's a, oh, yeah. Then you, then you kind of at the point where you're betting stuff, you're betting close to game time. You're not, um, tipping your hand that you're doing anything other than betting on a variety of sports uh, at a variety of times. Um, and the final thing, and I think I wrote about this, just log into the app every day. Like just, just yeah. be looking at the stuff. I mean, you're remember the whole point is that you're a gambler. You signed up and you're looking yeah. to gamble. So what do gamblers yeah. do? They click around and they look at what to gamble on and they think about betting a live tennis match and you know, they do all this stuff, right? They don't, they don't log in for two seconds at a time to pick off a, a price and then log out. That's not, you know, yeah. that's not what a, a recreational gambler does so so just be a recreational gambler dude that i i loved reading that uh part about app activity because yeah. i have i have a question that's related to that but it's like are you betting every day like in, in this new account you're just like look i'm gonna make oh, yeah, sure that sure. yeah yeah betting every day yeah you want to sure. make it like i signed up i'm here i'm gambling i'm splashy you know i'm a customer you like it's like absolutely that does feel more recreational to me than, you know, just like a couple of times a week, pop on, bet some stuff, pop off, you know? Right. Um, like if you log in for 20 minutes on Wednesday and throw them 15 golf matchups and then log out yeah. for the rest of the week, like that's not the customer they want. Like <laughs> that's just not, that's, that really is. Totally. Isn't. Yeah. And I used to do that. Like that at first, like that was that was what i did i remember i re i have i have a, a funny story it was like this was like in 2019 and i was just getting to the point where i was like beating soft books at golf with my own numbers my own opinions and i remember like logging in at 
6 a.m. because I knew it was like a late tournament. So I knew that Bovada wasn't going to like post lines until early the next day. So I woke up at at 6 a.m. Eastern time and I just started smashing in like (laughs) double betting like a John Rom like matchup. And then like, you know, these are just random uh, like this was before Rom was like absolutely massive. But then like some other random stuff like betting against Brooks Kepka, like just stuff that was like pretty not recreational and then immediately like this account had actually gone had been nice and and juicy because i wasn't doing any like arbing or anything so for a while they let me like kind of run free but 6 a.m logging into like smash golf matchups is just not a recreational thing to be the first person to the number and that that was (laughs) the last um, that Bovada account. That was the last uh, last stand of that it. Bovada account, I will tell you. So that was, uh, you know, I think I think like anytime you get get limited, it, it's breakdown kind of what happened. It's important too, because I think a lot of times you're like, oh, I got you. Oh, rec books limit people. They're scumbags, like blah, 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 which is fine. And you can get pissed at the books. And like, you know, I certainly do think they're, you know, it's, it's, it's funny to, to chirp him a little for not wanting to bet with you, but you know, was there a reason why you were limited at points bet after two bets for me looking back and listening to shippers podcast? Like, yes, because I bet like my promo bet on some like top Australian plus 1200 <laughs> at like some random PGA tour event. Like I'm the jackass yeah, do it. and like, that's, you know, like, so take every lesson you can. Like when you get limited, it's good to good to think back. And I'm sure the times that you've been limited, you thought about why and could be some of the genesis for like your content and for your strategy going forward. Yep. Yeah. My Bovada account died thinking whatever the Pats Seahawks Super Bowl was. Um yeah. we had Yeah. Uh my my buddy and I logged on, smashed like a bunch of um still remember the Shane Vereen props uh, for receptions because we had it so much higher than, than what Bavada first of all had some outlier alts. And then also yeah. like, uh, it was just obvious that this was the type of game where, uh, where we're going to have to have a lot of, you know, you can't run up the middle on that. You couldn't run up the middle on that Seahawks D. So like, it was just going to be like dump offs. Um, and so we just like, we logged on for 20 minutes, smashed every right. Shane Vereen reception right. ladder. Yeah. They all hit and we got our money out. And that was that for that, yeah. <laughs> for that account. Yeah. Like, so yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and then, yeah, but that was before I really realized being limited was a thing. I just thought I could do this. I was like, what? I'm like, right, you're right. Bad line. I'm just like, abuse it. Like, What's the problem? Um, yeah. And then, you're like, you know, this is America. You know? Yeah. Right. Exactly. And then, so that you was kind of like my first one, right? I was like, yeah. okay, that makes sense that, that they would, they would probably just lose a lot of money if they just let, you know, smart people, um, keep playing this stuff. So yeah, it's always a good lesson. Um, anytime it happens, that's sort of why like, I think my, my very first post on this was, um, make a plan as best you can. Like it's actually okay yes. to get limited at certain books yes. that, you know, maybe aren't going to be around in two years, as long yeah. as you extract the max value from them before you get limited. So just kind of map that out, right? If you're listening and sports betting is launching in your state soon, um, you got a great opportunity to kind of sit down and just, you know, think about, all right, which of these legals do I think I want a long-term relationship with? And which one do I think, uh, you know, I'm going to click around see what they have mispriced and just smash them. Um, I did that. I, you know, one of the books I got limited on up here that basically made a plan that this book would probably not survive very long. And I noticed they had some interesting baseball home run pricing and I just, just went to town and got limited a month later. And, you know, it was all like, but it was like part of the plan. It was like, yeah, all right. They, they caught on, you know, on to the, on to the next one. So that's the totally, totally fine. You just gotta, gotta be very intentional about what you're doing. Yeah. And sometimes, I mean, people will often ask me like, Oh, how do I, I'm really afraid of getting limited. I'm like, well, have you been limited anywhere yet? They're like, no. And I'm like, all right, well, that shouldn't be the case. Yeah. You should be limited at a few places. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, how do I keep a points bet account alive? You're not going to. Yeah. <laughs> I promise. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's just, it's just not yeah. happening. Like, like, but that doesn't mean you can't set a plan to like get like a good month out of them. Yeah. You know, why not? And then, exactly. you know, you know, you mentioned some of the DFS operators like, yeah, 
I roasted a better account. I mean, I put, that was one of the very few times I like posted some slips of mine, but I had like, I knew that better was one of the last remaining um, holdouts to nerfing the NFL receiving mm-hmm. correlation. So what I did was for two Sundays, I just bet, I, I deposited like as much as I could. And I just bet like 400, 500 slips of correlation and did it for two Sundays and I was the first person to really get limited um, on better. But then a mo- like a week later, they had just like axed football correlation anyway. And that was all part of my plan. I was like, listen, I'm not going to do this every Sunday for the rest of my life. But like, if you see the writing on the wall, like underdog prize picks and everybody's everybody's yep. cutting this out of eventually, like they will too. So now's the time to just smash them. There's no... There's no point to trying to not yes. get limited. Like this will not be there in a month. Correct. And yeah, it's like holistically. And I, I think this talking to you, I, I think there is like this nittiness that stops people from making a lot of money in the space. And it's the afraid it's being afraid to splash around with some parlays, take some negative EV bets, being afraid to to take the mask off and just pile into a site that you know you don't care about getting limited or not being afraid of confrontation with the, the sports book or whatever it is. But there's like this nittiness that holds people back. You know, I think being, and when I talk about nittiness for people who are new, it's like being conservative and it helps you not be a losing better and not be a degen, but then it, it almost like comes back to, to block you from being yes. a really good, better, you know? That's really well said. There's uh, even worse. Uh, well, sorry, not not worse. That you know, I've had a lot of uh, good conversations, but I mean, there's a lot of arbors out there right now. If you want to talk about nittiness, yeah. being afraid to have a single losing day. Oh, I <laughs> um, have a I have a funny story. Okay, is a is a tough one. Um, so, so you know, yeah, yeah, you you go ahead. No, yeah, I'll just kick it back to you. But I, I actually wanted to talk to you. So this, yeah. so an arbor who will not be named, but who's mm-hmm. incredibly smart. Um, messages me like hey you know question about originating and i was like okay yeah i had been busy or whatever dealing with my you know units bullshit or something and i get yeah. back to him i'm like hey you know can you call now and he was like yeah so he gives me a call and he's walking me through this whole origination thing i was like yeah like this all kind of makes sense i was like why why and he was like oh i had these caesar's boosts and i was like oh okay and he's like yeah but they expired. I was like, you didn't use them on anything? And he's like, no, I didn't. You know, I never had like yeah. action on oh one God. side. And I was like, these were like $500, like Caesars, like 25% yeah. boost. I was like, dude, sure. just find the best number and use it. It's yeah. not like. <laughs> might, might lose. Like, it's fine. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was like I, I, his thought process as someone, like this is someone who's, yeah. who's definitely smarter no, than me, course. but like at the same yeah, time, yeah. like so nitty where he was like going to build this whole origination model just yeah. to use his <laughs> seizures. Yeah. It's like, just use them. You can just use them. Yeah. They're fine. It's fine. Yeah. Any, any spread plus plus one ten is totally fine, man. I promise. Totally. Um, yeah, no, that's exactly right. Like I, I, I definitely have gotten, I don't think anybody's outright, said this in my dms yet but i've definitely gotten dms with the flavor of how do i continue arbing and never losing money at single day in my life and never get limited on any of the accounts and it's like all right man like so um yeah that's not gonna happen you're gonna have to kind of pick one uh or the other uh and that really was what comes down to it like you're uh, i mean you're gonna have to sacrifice ev and lose occasionally for the long run and you just have to be super confident that that is what is happening and not and also be disciplined enough to not let it turn into just like a full-on recreational you know gambling problem um and that's you know that is the one thing that i would say that is tricky about this is um like my, my one like cautionary tale of people sorting you sort of trying to tail my strategy is, you know, just do be disciplined that you're not kind of like any bet you lose or bet you make. You you can't just be like, Oh, that's fine. It's good for my account in the long yeah, term. Yeah, like yeah. It, it can slowly bleed into, you know, actually losing long term. Um, so just just be careful, uh, is kind of what I'll say. And my you know, my DMs are open to help with any of that stuff. Like definitely want to make sure people are 
doing this responsibly and in a in a way that um, actually makes them more money long term and doesn't you know start them down a down a different path. No, definitely. And like I, I always I think I had a tweet where it's like betting's great if you if if you make a mistake and your bet's minus EV, then yeah. that's great for account health. And if it's plus EV, then you make money. <laughs> And yeah, it's exactly. like true, but you definitely have to have it in the right. Like it has to be yeah. type, like, there's got to be the proper intention behind it yep. because, and I, I think that that's the whole plus EV thing. It's like, like telling people the sports books are, you know, Oh, sports books are billion dollar corporations. They can't be wrong. Like it's baked yep. in, like that's really good advice for almost everybody, but then it's really bad advice once you've gotten over the hump and like are, a winning gambler who's looking to push it to the next level. Like it's not good advice for the people who are already winning on Twitter and looking to win more or who are in your DMs asking about like how they can art until the end of time. Um, And it's totally fine. You know, it's bad advice for them. It's good advice for the people who are complaining about uh, like players getting hurt and demanding refunds. So I, I do also like, like you sometimes hesitate to, to, to push like this, this strategy of like, Hey, like you can go beat, beat the books with your brain because I, I do worry like you, or like, yeah. Oh, you should, you should play some cover. Then everyone, you know, it's like, Oh, I'm going to play like two days of, you know, I'm going to play like 10,000 hands of online blackjack for cover. Yeah, it's like, yeah. That wasn't for That's cover, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So not. it's definitely like walking, right. walking the line. But um, I do think that if that it's essential to the next step to be, thinking these big picture things that aren't just about the bet in front of you that think about your image that think about what you talked about. Oh, how does a trader get fired? I think that's a great, it's something that Ed Miller talks about. Don't piss off. Like how do you not piss a trader off? Right. Um, And that's like, because who hits the, who hits the button? It's the trader. The trader's hitting the button to limit you. Right. So like, how can you not piss them off for as long, long as possible? And I think that's uh that's all that's like you've done such a good job of making that content available. Whereas like besides Ed and his book interception, like Ed and Matt, uh, David Al and their book, I don't know if it's really kind of been put out there yet. Half the DMS I get, I get three, three types of DMS. One, what do you do different than data golf? I'm not going to tell you. If you come in my DM and you ask me that, I'm not telling you. Two, how do I do my taxes? I'm yeah. going to refer you to an account. And then three, I'm getting limited. What do I do? Yeah. And like, but no one writes about it. I, I don't, I yeah. should write about it more too. Like I, I'm definitely guilty of this, but like, it's so important to your overall, to your overall earn, you know, you, you get, you up your ROI by one one percent you go from four percent to five percent but it's like a little bit toxic to account health or even if it's neutral how much money does that make you probably less than learning how to extend your account by a hundred percent probably a lot less so it's like think about where that money is coming from right yeah and there's and there's room i mean i I think yeah like the nittiness is a good point like there's a lot of room to sacrifice some ev let's actually if you want to compare it to the blackjack book so yeah blackjack advantage blackjack if you play perfectly and are like the best card counter in the world or whatever you might have like a 1.5 percent edge over the house maybe it's like it's certainly not above two right um and so like that's 1.5% of EV to work with. And like, that's a pretty tough job, you know, tough thing yeah. for those guys to sacrifice any of that. Cause that's not much to begin yeah. with. And so yeah. you got to sacrifice some of that EV to even be able to play. So you're like kind of like voluntarily putting yourself down to 1%, which means yep. that like, you're really, really barely making any money. It's tough life. Sports betting. I mean, you can, you can, there's five to 10% EV opportunities yeah. there. So I promise you can sacrifice it down to four. Like you can, yep. you can do it. Yep. It's there's room. There's yeah. room to work with there. Um, and I would recommend, you know, doing that um, because it is going to help long term. And you think about like how as humans, like it's hard for us to just like give money away. Right. Although like when you gamble and you're not good at it, it's easier for you to do it. But when you know yeah. you're giving money away, it's like hard. Yes. And I get that. And like, it's generally not a good, a good skill to have. 
right? Is to be good at yeah, just handing money yes. away. But like <laughs> right. that that exact reason is why it can help because like mm-hmm. you'd think why do the sports books not, you know, prepare for this or whatever? Well, mm-hmm. it's because no one does it. So if you're yeah. going to be willing to go in and like play a little rec- recreationally, like give out a little money, you're going to look so much different than the army of people who just signed up for odds jam and are smashing in the same bet. Yes. You're going to look so much different that they're, their their eyes are just gonna be like, okay, you're wrecked. Like I'm not even gonna yeah. look too much into it. And then once you've yeah. ran up a tab, you want to get caught for your PL. That's what I yes. always say. It's like get caught That's for your That's a good P&L. way of putting it. Get caught for your PL. Don't get caught if you can't for anything else. Um <laughs> That's right. I remember Bet MGM. This is this is a little uh this is like the extent that I go and I'm sure you go to like think about account health. I'm reading a bet MGM uh, quarterly earnings report and they say, we want more parlays. We're focusing on parlays Mm -hmm. and higher, um, you know, whatever we want to basically hold a higher percentage. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I have have a betting partner. He signs up at bet MGM. I say, we are only doing parlays. If I, if I send you a play and it's not a parlay, don't bet it. Tell, like, tell me to go fuck myself. Like mm-hmm. at Bet MGM, we only do parlays. Yep. This guy sun runs an 100k plus Bet MGM account and never gets limited until yeah. he crosses six figures. There you and go. this was like, and it's it's like you know they said they wanted parlays, you know, and yeah. of course, like there were times there was a bet where I was like, oh, I want to hit this bet just the straight. It's such a good bet, but it's not worth it because you have to think about the total and you want to get caught for that yes. PL, you know, and that's it. That's right. That's a great way to put it. Yeah, exactly. Um, the worst, the uh, by far worst case scenario for a better is to uh, get limited after you and also have a negative <laughs> yeah. PL. Like that is like yeah, the yeah. stone nut level. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like you sign up, you bet 15 steam chased college basketball overnight so you go you go six and nine and then you get limited like that is like i mean if, if you take away anything from the show like please just don't be that guy don't like, just do it. anything other than that and uh, I, just, i've been that guy yeah. like for sure yeah. i was that guy on points bet pretty yeah. hard and in some other spots but like it's the worst feeling like yeah i yeah. just got limited i'm stuck <laughs> um Stop money. yeah <laughs> Which is yeah, so funny because good. it does it it should show also like how these books like they're doing they're trying to catch you before they before yes. you make money. So That's they're right. they're comfortable enough loading somebody down money. So it, it should it should tweak um how you think. But I do before because I realized we only talked about not being limited, I did want to touch on your recent contest success. And I know look it yeah. went you know, running a little, a little long, but if you have, have time to talk contest. Absolutely. Right? Okay. So you just won a massive football contest. Yes. Correct. Wow. DraftKings uh, yes. main event, pick them 500 buy-in 142K up top. I think pretty good, Ooh. pretty good hit. That's crazy. And you're picking against yep. the spread each week, right? It's very, if you're familiar with the super contest and the circa millions, yeah. it's the exact same thing. It's DraftKings version of that. So I think around 1500 players entered this year. So five picks against the spread every week with one skip week uh, is the rule. Okay. This one. okay. And you, we were talking like, I actually, I never play contests. Like I don't even play the one and dones for golf, but you were, we were talking yeah. and like, you make that, a decent, you know, at least a, a notable part of, of your action. Yeah. Like why, why is that? Yeah. It's probably not a huge part of my action when it all comes down to it, but I think it is, right. um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to play more. Uh, I think it's just generally uh, pretty soft fields and, and very mm. plus EV thing to play. Um, I actually started back in the day in like 2016. So I think from 2016 to 2018, I won, three straight years uh we did a college bowl uh pick them it was against the spread confidence ranking which is pretty dj so you have to pick them all ats and also confidence rank one through four. oh wow which spreads the most confidence it was a pretty dj yeah. contest it's pretty good yeah uh probably like 25 30 people and i won it three years in a row and by year that's, four, cr- that's like, yeah we're like we're not doing this anymore <laughs> like wow get this guy you literally broke the table you broke um, the table 
<laughs> yeah, broke broke the contest, and that, that you know that was like my okay, maybe like I know how to do these um, type of situation. And, and really, a lot of it is just I think there's so much overthinking yourself in these things, um, yeah. and I think that's what makes them pretty attractive to me in the sense that. I'm already betting each week anyway, probably on the sport that the contest is taking place. Mm. So for NFL, right? Like I'm obviously doing NFL research each week for college football bowls. Mm. I'm doing the research for golf one and done. like, I'm, you know, uh, trying to bet on golf more, but you know, um, definitely at least, pay, you know, huge fan of the game and, and pay attention. So first of all, some of the research is already pre done. And second of all, like just the payout structure and the way these contests work. I mean, I think it's a really good way, especially if you're even kind of a beginner. Um, and I yeah. did not have the bankroll I had now back in 2016, you know, I was risking, you know, so some percent of my bankroll and it's a great way to get, um, a ton of practice and exposure all season for a fixed risk amount. Right. So yes. 500 bucks for an entire NFL season of picks. Pretty good. If you, you know, want, um, to really kind of work on handicapping NFL, understand line movement, understand contest strategy, not not the biggest buy-in in the world for you know 17 18 weeks of you know getting to practice this stuff and i think that's really why i would recommend a lot of people do these um and yeah i mean i think a lot yeah, of people just, just really point. think it um there's a lot of folks who basically decide they go two and three one week and they decide they just have to go nuts the next week to make it all back and um that's you know I, i'm gonna produce a little bit more content on on contest strategy i've written one post but that's sort of the main, that's sort of the, the, the number one piece of advice is like being contrarian is really overrated early on in the contest. Like just, Interesting. just okay. make your picks, like just do not like just make your uh, picks. Um, so it's, it's a lot like in poker where put proper tournament exactly. strategy, play tight, play tighter early Correct. because of ICM and then, you know, Correct. depending, depending on like your chip position and whatnot, you're going to loosen up um, later. It's exactly, exactly like that. That's right. Yeah. And what most people do is when the blinds are low, they're like, oh, I can splash around, you know, right. like it doesn't really cost me that much, which is of course right, right, right. incredibly right. inefficient in a tournament. Um, so similar thing to a contest. It's like, oh, I need some wins. Let me like go crazy in week three. Um, don't do that. Like, don't make do your that. picks. That's and then, See, I wouldn't um, have, I wouldn't have known that. I would have immediately started like, oh, how can I be contrarian? Because I don't, I don't no. do this. So like, and I think um, that's natural. That's a natural kind of feeling yeah. you hear oh you gotta you gotta do gto you gotta pick what you aren't picking um, mm -hmm. wow yeah it's it's really overrated but the interesting thing is it's really underrated right at the end right so the hard part is going from making your picks to like what i did the very last week in the in the DraftKings one which is i was i was in third yes going into the last week and so at that point you switch your strategy 100 percent on its head yeah. to be like i need to be I need to. I was not. I was barely even studying the games that week. I was studying what the two guys ahead of me had picked every week, and yeah. what was most likely to make me the most opposite and different and pass them for first. Um, yes. And the one game that did it was like the. I think the Chiefs covered in some crazy way that I probably didn't deserve. But they got there. The other guy at the other side of the game, and that you know eventually was the one that kind of jumped me in the first. So it's hard. Like it's really hard, like staying the course. And then at the very right. end being like, okay, now I have to forget everything I just did and only right. focus on like how to jump up into that top spot. Um, and a lot right, of people really might struggle be, with that. Right. You might be picking something that you're like, well, objectively in a vacuum, yeah. this is like a bad pick. Yeah. But because of, you know, what teams, it could be a survivor, what teams my opponents yep. have left or, or like, Correct. you know, that first place money is so much, you know, that, that so much of the value is concentrated there. So then you try and Correct. just basically like, like moon, uh, you know, just like, right. you know, you know, just take a shot at it and you're going to feel like you're yeah. doing something super degen, but it's actually optimal. No, it's, it's hugely optimal. Cause I mean, I think the difference between fourth and or third and first is like a hundred K plus and the difference between yeah. third and seventh is like, 9k so it's like yeah 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 you clearly so, yeah. the correct thing i mean if it goes wrong it doesn't yeah. you know it costs you some but i mean you're basically getting a 10 to 1 on you know a spread like an nfl spread going right right so i mean that's a great um shot to take i can't i i'm excited for more contest contest strategy i and you know what i think a good good takeaway from that was if you are earlier on or you're looking to kind of try new things, a contest could be a good place to yeah. to do that with them. Like if you're afraid to start, like if you're someone who's arbing and you're afraid to have 
one side. I mean, may, you know, maybe started in a contest. You, you get, yeah. you set your loss amount. You get to, you know, follow. You you get to follow the spreads and understand you're placing very small bets. But like, you have the excitement of possibly winning a big amount, and you know, it'll help you dip your toes in. Like, I think I think that's great. And yeah, I, I, or I if think, you're sick of your golf outrights never hitting, just play a one <laughs> yeah, and done, and then you get all the excitement when it actually hits with none of the. Damn it! I'm down 100 percent ROI this week. That's when, right. When it doesn't, you go, so, yeah. yeah, golf, golf one. I'm, I still haven't played. I, it's yeah. so crazy. I haven't played a golf one done in my my entire life. But uh, damn, that is crazy. maybe uh, maybe we'll like put together some like a higher stakes one or something. Yeah. That would be fun at at some point. That could be that could be intriguing. And I I probably would be minus. Like you would be. You would. And this is the thing about tournament strategy is yeah. like in a golf one done even though like i spend so much time on golf like yeah. mr limited would be a favorite because he just under you know you understand the the mechanics of a tournament play and that's so important in this stuff so it adds that fun do you think there's like that's right do you think people the circuit contest had a lot of like uh, yeah. hype this year right like, yeah. do you think there is some pathway forward for like more professional high stakes contests that would create excitement kind of like poker back in the day yeah. yeah it totally depends on um honestly it is a little bit up to the platforms and the books to market it yeah. i was i was hoping that DraftKings would have yeah, more yeah. people in this one um and I, I think it's i mean look it's great for the books right like it's a guaranteed rate right they just hold 10 yeah. percent and pay out the pot so they don't have to yeah. worry about you know, ideally they'd, they'd love everybody to be in these things. Um, so Circa, Circa is sort of the market leader. They've done a great job just promoting this stuff. Um, obviously with the survivor getting that much buzz this year and that dude, you know, Sean Perry, not Sean chopping Perry, and all yeah. that stuff. I think that was uh, positive for con for us as contest players long-term. Um, there's yeah. going to be a lot more interest in stuff like the survivor and the Circa millions. Um, yeah. So I, you know, I hope, I hope it continues to grow. It's really fun. My, you know, my friends and I have been doing a, like, and if like a super con before, you know, cause betting wasn't even legal in our state until this year. So, I mean, since like 2015, we've been doing our own super contest, right. And just tracking it yeah. in Excel every year. Um, so it's just, I mean, it's a great way to like stay, you know, connect, have something to do every week, like have something yeah. to root for, even if you don't want to necessarily risk a ton of money each week. Um, it's really really great stuff so i would i would hope i hope these things keep going um dude i'm noticing I think a it's, lot of golf one and done interest this year too so i, I think we're yeah. on the rise yeah i should i should have looked a little more into it but i do think the sean perry point is a good point in because that got like mainstream media attention yeah. and that's really hard to do in gambling like really right. hard like we think that was such a big deal but the fact that it even touched like mainstream is 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 a big deal so i think that my prediction is That's next right. year there's going to be. I think I I'm I'm bullish on contests, so yep. I think uh, I don't know. I think you're like you're just position yourself exactly right. You got you got the two areas of expertise. I think that people are going to always continue to want. They'll they'll be going up because the less marketing money, the more these more people are going to have to switch to like different strategies of winning. Plus the less tolerant. Yep books might be of, of having players. So understanding how to have like a balanced strategy that gets you longevity is important. And then like contests, you know, they, you don't get limited in contests. They take a rate. Nope. It's a poker nope. tournament. So, so I it's think, uh, I don't know if that was, if that was uh, just some, Je you know, Yoda Jedi move of seeing the future on your part. I think it's like your position. Exactly. Yeah. Right, man. And That's right. I waited to win a bunch of money until this year. <laughs> I could have done it previous years, but you know, it was important but to you, not intentionally you do You had it. to yeah. wait till That's like right. the biggest, the biggest D bag right. in the space was, uh, that was important. <laughs> making waves. Yeah. Is Sean Perry, our generation's Chris Moneymaker. I mean, people are asking. I don't wow. Know. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna bring this mainstream now people, people are at the sean people perry effect the sean perry effect i literally record can't contest fields next year it. <laughs> yeah exactly boom it's gonna yep. i mean the funny thing is like it kind of will that's great it, oh I my think god it might. I think it might. yeah okay next year we got to remember to to show this yep. clip of of our prediction that sean perry is yes the chris moneymaker of sports betting <laughs> Sports fan contest. Survivor and pickup contest. Exactly, yeah, exactly. And you, you will see yeah. a similar effect.
But uh, yeah, For man, sure. I love to have you on. This is awesome. I read all yeah. your content. You're one of the the people that I really um, always learn something from when when you write something, and I appreciate you like taking the time to do do thoughtful content that is um, not just picks or not just you know that you know your graph or whatever it is. Like I yeah. I I love I love learning and hearing people's different you know different people's opinions. So bringing that to Twitter, it's been been awesome seeing you on there making that content and you know. Like this was an inev- inevitability that you were going to be on on the show because I was just like so so into your content. But thanks for you know making it happen and, and coming on and giving people what I think is like really valuable advice that they might not even know is valuable yet. But they'll be coming back hopefully re-listening to this, rereading your content for for a long time to to make a lot of money. Hopefully. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me on. No, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to jump on. And, um, as I always say, you know, I, I do actually try to respond to everything. If you DM me, um, if I don't respond, it's probably because you asked a very similar question that I'm about to answer publicly. So, so don't be uh, yeah. offended. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I am like, this is, this is truly like something I enjoy doing. Like I like writing about this stuff and helping, um, and yeah, man, thanks for, thanks for having me on. Um, love reading all your stuff as well. Uh, and it's, you know, good luck this, uh, golf season should be a fun one. Yeah. 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 I appreciate it. Um, and you're at Mr. Limited. I'll, I'll post like I always do in the show notes. I'll yeah, post yeah. your, your Twitter. Um, Mr. Limited yeah, with two eyes. With two eyes. One eye was the taken, of- sadly. <laughs> you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. Like Golden Pants 13 was taken. I have Golden Pants That's zero right, one man. three. It's like. It's tough. Damn it. Um, but yeah, yeah, follow, follow, follow Mr. Limited and push, uh, push him to keep writing great, great content. I'd love to, I can't wait to see what, uh, 2024 brings and yeah, yeah, man, thanks for coming on. Thank you.